Good day and welcome to this first video of five, short videos indeed, about the gospel of life in the Catholic Church. We're doing this program for two main reasons. The first one is to refresh ourselves in order to be able to know what it is that the church teaches. There's a lot of anti-life language out there today, and I think a lot of Catholics have easily become confused, and it's important for us to realize what the church teaches and why it is that she does teach this. So that's the first reason. The second is we all have a duty to be pro-life. God has called us into life to live the faith and to live it actively, and this is a gospel that we need to bring out. And so we'll talk a little bit about that as well. What are some of the themes that we're gonna be thinking about? First is the dignity of the human person. At the very heart of the gospel of life is this matter that there is a real strong dignity to the human person that we're called to recognize. It's at the very heart, really, of everything that we teach and preach. And why? Because we were made in the image of God and we were saved in Jesus Christ. We live with God himself even now. So we'll talk about that. We'll talk in another video on the term from conception to natural death. It's obvious why it is that uh, we have death as a last moment on earth because that is the last moment. But why do we say that conception is the first moment rather than any other moment on the continuum of life? We'll take a look at that. There are great theological and scientific reasons that the church teaches that. In another video, we're going to look at three false ideas out there about life and about abortion. There are a number of things being said that we need to talk about to get clear about. One of them is that expression, my body, my choice. That is a falsity, and we need to talk about why from the viewpoint of the church that's the case. How about this? I cannot and should not force my religious views on other people. We need to look at that as well. What does the church say about that? And we'll look at this fact that people sometimes say to us, pro-lifers care only about abortion and euthanasia. Well, while those are two big issues in our day, we're actually involved and committed to all of human life. And we'll talk about that. We have a great responsibility. And lastly, the responsibility that we have, you and I, to go out and by our lives to witness to this pro-life gospel. The Lord wants us to do that. In fact, John Paul II, in the very first sentence of his Gospel of Life encyclical, says this, the Gospel of Life is at the heart of Jesus' message. We need not only to know that, but to live it. What are we gonna to do today? I think that for us to really understand those things I just mentioned to you, we need to understand why the church teaches the way that she does. There's a reason for it. You know, there are a lot of people today who don't think that there is any such thing as the true or the good. They think that we should be able to live as we want, as long as we don't hurt anybody, and that the church is just much too restrictive in its teaching. Nothing could be further from the truth. The teaching of the church is rooted in two critical realities. It's rooted in the revelation of God the revelation that God gave to us first through the prophets and then ultimately in Jesus Christ. And it's rooted also in God's revelation in creation. You and I can look out at the world in which we live and see things there that directly point to the existence of a living God. The first thing I might suggest to you is the beauty of the world in which we live. How can you look at that and not say there was someone who is so beautiful in and of himself that he shared it in the creation that he made? Let me talk about those two things for a moment. The revelation of God in Christ. The letter to the Hebrews, we're all familiar with it. The first line of that letter reads like this. In times past, God spoke in partial and various ways to our ancestors through the prophets. In these last days, he spoke to us through a son. Two things to notice here. We Catholics believe that God spoke to us, that God revealed himself to us first through the prophets, through Abraham and Moses, through Isaiah the prophet, and the last great prophet, John the Baptist. And then he spoke to us through his son. John the Evangelist calls the son the very word of God, the very speech of God, and God 
in his love for us, gave his son to us. He became one like us. Remember what John says in the prologue to his gospel. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And that Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we have had the privilege to behold him and to know him. We Catholics not only believe that God spoke to us, we believe what God spoke to us. And we do that with a gift of faith. In addition to God's revealing himself by his word, God also reveals himself in his creation. All of creation came into being from God and it bears the very stamp of God. Remember the book of Genesis, how once God finished his creation, he looked at all of it and he said, it is very, very good. What God made resembles God. It's in his image and you and I as human beings are most like God in his image. Just as God gave us a gift of faith to be able to accept and understand his revelation, God gave us a gift of reason so that you and I could use that reason in order to look out at creation and to understand it and to know it. Let me say a little bit about that. When you and I look out at the things of the world, we see things in one of two ways. We either see things made by us, like chairs and houses and laws and poetry, or we see things for which we're not responsible. We didn't make them, like dogs and trees and glaciers and stones. When we're talking about something that we made, we say that that's a conventional or invented object. When we look at something and realize that we're not responsible for it, but that it has showed up in nature on its own, we talk about those things as things of nature. And it's tremendously important that you and I get that distinction correct. Because if we don't, we're gonna mistakenly talk about natural things as if they're conventional, and conventional things as if they're natural. And you and I know we can't do that. Think about the environment for a moment. You and I know that we're dealing with something that we're not responsible for. That is real natural reality. And yet, if we treat it as something that is ours that we can manipulate or turn into anything we want it to be, it's gonna come back to haunt us. Look at what we've done over the decades, over the years, with respect to the ozone layer, which protects us from those ultraviolet rays of the sun. You and I have got to pay more attention to our environment. And not only that, we've got to realize that we're part of the environment ourselves, and we have got to take care of ourselves. Am I treating myself and other people as conventional objects rather than as people who are subjects and exist by nature, not because I put them there? The moment that you and I objectify ourselves or others, we're doing real damage to each other as community, and we've got to pay great attention to that. Within the Catholic tradition, natural things are understood as created by God, and conventional things are things that are produced by the human person. That distinction between nature and convention helps us to understand another important reality out there. And this is something that our reason can know just by looking out at the world, and it's this. You and I are able to recognize things in the world because they have truths or identities about them. For example, we would never mistake a tree for a dog or a desk for a pen. Each of these things shows up to us regularly again and again in lots of different ways. And as it does, there's something the same that you and I register in our minds, in our reason, and we have identities and we learn how to grow by allowing those identities to become part of who we are. Look, for example, how much time it takes in life to really get straight about things. I think, for example, about how adults and children are different in the way that they respond to magic. When a child sees a rabbit come out of a hat, she cries, wow, rabbits come out of hats. When the adult, on the other hand, sees that, the first reaction of the adult is, 
How did he do that? That's a trick because rabbits don't come out of the hat. Whereas the young girl might say, do that again, I want to see it again. We adults smile trying to figure out what was the trick of it all. There's something wonderful about what God has done with us in terms of giving us a gift of faith. And by that way, by the way, that faith is something that God infused into us. At the time of our baptism, the Lord actually, when that water was being poured and when the priest or the deacon or in some cases a layman says, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, in that moment you and I receive a gift of faith. Now, if we received it as kids, as little children, it's not going to become active and alive in a certain way, but it's there and it is part of who we are. That's a gift that God infuses within us. Our reason, on the other hand, is something that God built into us when he made it. It's part of the logic of who we are. We're wired with reason and we have the ability to see the truths and the identities of things that exist in the world. Let's sum up what we said today. First of all, when the church teaches about God, the world, and the human person, the church isn't giving us some arbitrary set of principles. The church is rooting everything that she says in faith and in reason. What did God say to us and what got said perfectly in the Lord Jesus and how is it that you and I should pay attention to that with the gift of faith that we have? And secondly, you and I are able to look out at creation and in that creation by the gift of natural reason to recognize some real truths that are out there that we're not making up but are what they are in and of what they are. We know the truths of God's faith, of God's revelation by faith, and we know the truths of creation by the gift of reason. And we know that these few things that we've talked about today are at the very heart of why it is that the church teaches. I'd like to leave you with a couple of questions that you might think about before you get to our next video. First of all, was there anything in this presentation that was new to you, something that you did not know or did not think about before? What was it? And why don't you think about it a little more and let it become part of who you are? Secondly, if someone asked you to explain the difference between faith and reason, do you think that you'd be able to do it? And also, was this video helpful in your being able to do that? Please join us in our second video where we're going to explore the dignity of the human person. Thanks so much for being with us today, and I very much look forward to being with you in our next get-together. God bless you all.